Welcome in to a Tuesday edition of the Jordy Colada Show. Live here from the UDL. What am I hearing? I hear some sound. The music, dude. The we funk. have it like an intro. So no, I know, but I hear it outside of my headphones. You probably have your laptop on or the TV on or something that we usually do. Oh. Was we that it? Laptop. <laughs> Welcome into a Tuesday edition of the Jordy Colada Show, presented every day by Go Chevrolet. Remember, our coffee is locally brewed over at Majestic. It is locally brewed in South Louisiana. And all of our guests via the phone line this morning will come compliments of Metropolitan Health Group, Real Doctors, Real Solutions from Jason Ramazan and Charlie Harvey. In fact, we'll be telling you about a trip from Mr. Fun out to Los Angeles for the first game of the LSU football regular season versus UCLA as Mr. Fun's putting a travel trip together that we will be promoting here on the Jordy Colada Show. We'll tell you all about it. Jammed pack on this Tuesday. We'll talk to Hunt Palmer, who will be in the UDL. He will be at the undisclosed location. 8 a.m. this morning, we will recap the NFL draft with Jim Nagy. Nagy, of course, of the Reese's Senior Bowl and longtime NFL scout. 8.30, Travis Jewett, who is the uh, head coach of the Tulane Green Wave baseball team, which might be the hottest team in the country. Won 13 of their last 14 games right now. They sit in first place in the American Athletic Conference. Tulane has won five road games and has a win over nationally ranked Mississippi State earlier this season. They feature the league's best pitching staff over in the AAC, and they have an enormous series this weekend versus ECU. Uh, and we will talk to the head coach of the Tulane Green Wave. Slept on conference. Coach yeah, Travis Jewett, conference, I'm telling you, man. Coming up here at uh, at eight thirty this morning, we'll talk to Coach Jewett about his Green Wave right now, which are thirteen and two in the league, mm. and twenty four and fourteen overall, and just found themselves in the collegiate baseball polls this week as they were slotted at twenty two in perfect game and twenty four in collegiate baseball after taking a series versus Houston over the weekend. Looking forward to our conversation there, and Shay Dixon will stop by at some point here in the uh, uh, undisclosed location uh, in the second hour today. As uh, we'll talk to him about some recruiting news, a major player, literally, uh, in the uh, in the transfer portal, former uh, Baton Rouge native and Madison Prep standout, Major Burns from the University of Georgia, spent a season over there. Announced yesterday that he was uh, the defensive back, was putting his name into the transfer portal. We'll ask Shea, who had uh, some interesting tidbits. On Major Burns yesterday over at Go247, where he stands here and how close LSU could be to making this deal happen. So, jam packed here on this Tuesday. Always appreciate your interaction. Katie is here. Uh, I don't know how we, we, we played musical chairs. Somehow we ended up with a, with, with a different set here. I was charging my laptop. Um, okay, okay, there you go. Um, so, Katie is in her, uh, her Dak Prescott uh, support. We put baby in the swag. corner. That's right. <laughs> No way. No way. Dude. No way. <laughs> were you You're a fan? A, were you a fan Dak. before Dak? I actually was, oh. but not as big a fan. You were a Cowboys fan before yeah, Dak? Yeah, I've always liked the Cowboys. Okay. But I'm not as big a fan. So growing and up if in he Miss... he left, I would bail to wherever he went. For yeah. sure. Um, might yeah. be going to Green Bay. Then I'll be a Green Bay fan. No, he can't now after the big paycheck. Uh, but uh, something's going on in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers. And, oh, it's uh, toxic. It is bad, man. We will talk to Nagy a little bit about that, just with his NFL experience, about that story and what he thinks about it. But it looks like that the reigning MVP could be on the move because it looks like the work environment up there in Green Bay is just uh, it's just not happening, man. It just doesn't look like Jordan Love time. They're going to be able to work things out, and some of the things behind the scenes seems like even um, the the highest of executives uh, over at uh, Green Bay are not uh, so sure about Jordan Love, and in fact, it being his time. So uh, this is this has been five days since since Rogers has demanded out of Green Bay, and nothing Why, nothing Why? positive has happened. Why did um, this start? So for the last decade. Green Bay has spent nine of their first round picks on defensive players. Okay. And the only time that they chose an offensive player in the first round was when they moved up to pick Jordan Love, a quarterback, at a Utah State two years ago, which royally pissed off Aaron Rodgers, and rightfully so, yeah. because this was a team, and still is a team, 
that was knocked out of the NFC Championship. I mean, Brady and the Buccaneers beat Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay to go to the Super Bowl. They're a player away, seemingly. A couple coaching um, decisions, too. The last couple, of, yeah, and a coaching decision. I mean, uh, Matt LaFleur decided to kick a field goal late in the game rather than Trust his MVP. putting the ball in the MVP's hand and winning the game to go to the Super Bowl, uh, which, which lost a lot of trust uh, from Rodgers. But... I think over the la- you know over the years, Rodgers has been very turned off by the lack of support that the administration has given. The, the I mean you know the the oh best God. quarterback in the league. Yeah, he was begging for year Rogers. in year out. I mean, we can talk Breeze, we can talk Brady, we can talk all those guys that are routinely up in the conversation, but Aaron Rodgers is the most talented out of all of them, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, just like natural quarterback skill, the way he throws the football, the way he plays the position, he is a generation, he is a true generational talent. You see the Hail Marys? I mean, all that (laughs) stuff. He I mean, the way he just, he just flicks the ball out of his hand and the way it jumps. Um, the, The way he plays with ease. I mean, Breeze looks like he's really trying out there. You know, I mean, Brady's really <laughs> pressing out there. Yes. I mean, Rodgers is just very, very Backyard football. Fluid. Yeah, it's just like very it, man. easy. You don't have to make um, it look that hard. And he's like, it's no, not easy. He doesn't. I mean, he, and, and for whatever reason, Green Bay has has had him in his prime. And, you know, I guess you could argue that he's still there, being that he's an MVP uh, right now. But, I mean, you know, over the last five to six years, seven years, he's been the best quarterback in the league. And they've... Wasted really him? not mm-hmm. giving him a lot of help. I mean, they've got guys around him, and they've made some off-season free agent signings. I mean, I, I, they've brought in guys like Jimmy Graham when Graham was what was still relatively productive. Um, but I mean, they, they've got Devontae Adams is there. He's a big time wide receiver. But they have had opportunities to build up a team around Rodgers, and they've just routinely gone in a different direction of giving him help, whether it's been defensive selections in the first round of the NFL draft or, you know, head-scratching picks like trying to draft his backup or his successor when he's playing at an MVP level. Um, well, refusal to sign him. Would you say that that's yeah. been Green Bay's, like, MO? Didn't they do that? I mean, you could say that's what they did when Brett Favre was playing well and they yeah. went and grabbed Rodgers. Like, that's kind of what they've done as a franchise. But this seems... It's all just played out all very awkwardly because they weren't giving him help. Then they trade for they trade up in the draft. You're like, oh, maybe they're getting a weapon. No, it's a quarterback. And Rodgers doesn't seem anywhere near the precipice of falling off. And Brett Favre thing was different. Favre every year, you didn't know if he was going to retire or not. He played those games with the with, with the franchise of I might be back next season. I might not. I don't know. And then you know he would decide, oh, I want to come back. And he would come back and he would play at a very elite level. But then. He would come back, and it would be the same old song and dance. Is he going to come back? Does he want to come back? I don't. It got to a point where Green Bay had to start to think about life after Brett Favre, and once they made that choice, Favre really now locked back in. I mean, it was like, you know, I mean, it, it was like you, you know, playing games with with your partner. I mean, like you know, you step out, you go try to date somebody else, or you try to see somebody else, but you realize like. Hey, hold up, hold up. I'm really happy over here. I don't need to start. I don't need to be playing these games. I don't need to go out and keep uh, testing the whether waters. or not they're going to leave because I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. And that kind of really locked Favre back in. But then, you know, Favre was famous for saying it's not my responsibility to develop the backup quarterback. It's not my job to develop Aaron Rodgers. So there was a, there was a rub there between Rodgers and Favre that I think, you know, internally kind of played out. But – you know, now Rodgers, I think he would understand if the situation was like the Favre era where, you know, year in, year out, Rodgers would be saying, hey, I don't know if I'm coming back, mm-hmm. or this might be the end, or my best football is behind me, or I don't know how much I can do this. Um, I think he's done. In Green Bay. I think he's dating an actress. He's hanging out with yeah, actors Katie, and actors. He's been doing his whole life. No, but I think he's got a taste of this like no. Hollywood fame. No, and he's, he's been dating Hollywood. That. He's been do- dating uh, Hollywood it's people. It's getting heavy though. I mean, he broke up with Janica Patrick. Who was he? He was dating somebody. Dating Olivia James. Munn before he that. Yeah, he's Olivia got a very Munn impressive track that. list. He does. He's dating he's, Shailene Woodley now. He's engaged to her. That's right. Hosting Jeopardy. You know, but but he's still the MVP. Of the National Football League. If I'm the 49ers, I'm kicking myself for trading up for Trey Lance. If you wait two weeks, 
and used all of those picks. Aaron Rodgers is from that area. You needed a quarterback. I that could have been the landing spot. I wonder you all your I capital. what New Orleans is doing behind the scenes. We talked about it yesterday. I know we yes. talked a little about it with, with Underhill, but, I mean, if he's truly available. Give everything. Oh, bro. Bro, I don't think we had the capital. It was three. I was reading about what the Saints were trying to get into the top ten because they wanted to get Mac Jones because they knew that if he fell past a certain number – that the Patriots were going to, or the Patriots going to draft him. So they tried to get into the top ten, and it was three first round picks to crack the top ten. Stop. And that's for a rookie, bro. If you're trying to get Aaron Rodgers, I don't know what the capital is. You have to give up. I mean, you players need, and picks. You oh, don't definitely. Need much to be Would you give up Rogers. Ramchick for Rodgers? Yes. I mean, would you give up Ramchick and Thomas? Well, then, then how happy is Rodgers anyway? He's looking around. He's like, I thought I came here for the weapons, and now we don't have any weapons. You know, like it's kind of. We need our cake and to eat it too. Yeah, um, I, I don't know, man. I, I just think that this this Rogers situation, he's not going to play in Green Bay again. No, I agree with you. I think he's he's absolutely done in Green Bay because he wants the GM fired. He wants the G. He's well, he's given an ultimatum. It's me or the GM. He's saying it's it's either me or him. And I mean, if anybody's got any <laughs> brains to him yeah. up there at Green Bay, I mean, it's a very easy call, right? I mean, it's a very easy scenario to say, okay, twelve, we're with you, bro. Um, Play your coach like, like Jackie Moon. Just let him roll it out there. Be the GM. How old? He's 36? 37. 37. He's 37? Yeah. But, I mean, look at Tom Brady. Yeah. Um, he, just, I mean, he just won the MVP. So. I, I, I mean, I, I, would try, I would try to move him if he was, if he was this adamant on, on, on trying to get out. I would get as much for him while he is still, you know, his stock is still high enough to get to get as much as you can. I mean, you could probably get three first round, two first round picks in a player easily for yeah. Aaron Rodgers. So I mean, I don't know how much how much longer you can put that price tag on a 37 year old quarterback. I do know that Brady exists, but he is a very much an outlier. And you Brady know? is in love with the competition of the game. Rodgers obviously has. I think he's developed interest elsewhere. Like he, you know, I'm sure he loves football, but he has that mindset of. You know, he's into the Jeopardy thing. He's very an otherworldly thinker. Now, if you're a quarterback, you are petty, you are competitive. He will never live down the Jordan Love pick when he was demanding help and they draft up and get his replacement. They don't want to give him an extension. They're ultra-competitive players who are petty and he wants to win a Super Bowl somewhere else. Spite him. Do you think that if anybody has the ability or, like, the, the mindset to sit out a full year, it's Rodgers? Because yes. that's what I think. He's I think he much. would 100% cross his feet and go, yo, go ahead. Especially, go at, ahead this, play without especially me. at this point. See my model. Like, yeah. Especially at this point. Because he's got options. He's got money. He's got wealth. He's got all of what you try to. Yeah, I mean, he's got a, he's got a, a life. You know, he's got <laughs> a partner. He's, got, he's getting married. I mean, um, I read where he's building his dream home. In, in, in California, in the Malibu. transitional period for yeah, the guy. Man. I mean, he's just kind of going through uh, another stage. You know, I mean, he's just going through another stage in life and where he's, he, he's, he's taking that next step. And I don't know how and where football fits into the priority list, but I do believe it's there. I do believe you can't play at a, a MVP level in the National Football League and just check out. Right? I mean, when you can look around and see scenarios like Tom Brady, which, you know, I mean, he kind of LeBroned himself to Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he kind of let you know that it was going to be a, a weird offseason for him two years ago. Um, and it feels like that with yeah. Rodgers. You know what I mean? It feels like he could kind of say behind the scenes, these are the three or four teams that I'm going to make this deal happen or I'm going to retire. And, you know, I think he would sit out of football for a year to get the power back to say, hey, I'm going to go in my career in Seattle, New Orleans, um, wh wherever it may be. I mean, wh wh wherever it, it makes the most sense uh, for him to, to finish up. But I, I think he's, it feels like he's done in Green Bay. If you retire are you still, and you come back, you're not under contract anymore, are you? There is a, a certain... Um, discrepancy to retired players. Because Gronk just yeah. kind of did that. Right. Um, and, Maybe Edelman, too. But I think if he retires for a year... Um, free game? Not, not, not that he's free game, but like you lose a certain type of salary cap and certain type of, of power in the sense of uh, that, that Green Bay would not so much own his rights. Um, but I, I don't know, man. I, I, I think... Um, 
Andrew Messina says, if you're Jeopardy, would you send a Romo-like CBS contract to Rodgers to be the host of the new show? It depends on where Jeopardy is in how they feel about Rodgers. I have not watched a lot of these guest hosts in Jeopardy. Joe Buck. Uh, Joe Buck, I saw, but I mean, I, I know that Aaron Rodgers very much stood out, and I know that he is passionate about the project, and I know that if given the opportunity and everything that you see and get the feedback on, he would take the chance. Like, he would take the gig. Oh, he's openly advocating for it. Did you see what he wore to the Kentucky Derby? Yes. The uh, the nameplate? Yes. Yeah, the turd Ferguson? Like, he's making <laughs> subtle, <laughs> subtle shout-outs to, like, they could that's a Will j- Farrell, yeah. I suppose. So he wants that job, and that has to pay well. And if he can get that and sit out for a year and just kind of be Aaron Rodgers. Possible. That's I mean, possible. wins that life. Yeah. So uh, I don't know, man. This thing is a soap opera that I think is only going to get a little bit. And totally um, avoidable. Yeah. Really and truly. Uh, I mean, the man a wide receiver. Green Bay has very much brought this on themselves. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's very much been a, uh, you know, you, you've made your bed. Now you have to lay in it type situation with the MVP of the league. Uh, last night, LSU baseball scored six of their eight uh, scored six of their eight runs um, scored uh, scored a run in six of the eight innings they batted in and won ten to two against Southern on Monday night at Alley Box Stadium, Skip Burtman Field. LSU will hit the road to face Auburn on Thursday. Uh, that will be Game One over at Plainsman Park. Game will be uh, broadcast on ESPNU. Uh, and then, like we said, coming in. To the show, major news yesterday in the transfer portal, or at least big news uh, here to watch in the transfer portal, is that Major Burns, former Madison Prep standout, Baton Rouge native, uh, has put himself, has put his name into the transfer portal after spending his freshman season at, uh, at the University of Georgia. Born, uh, Burns was rated a four-star defensive back uh, during the 2020 cycle uh, was a top 15 safety in the country and was actually committed to LSU for about six months before LSU uh, decided, it seemed like, at, at the end of his recruitment, uh, to pull the offer um, and, and say that they were going to go in a, a different direction because the numbers just didn't work out. Um, then, you know, the Baton Rouge native ends up signing with, uh, with Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs uh, just about uh, 10 days after decommitting uh, from LSU, uh, but Shea Dixon, who will be here uh, at some point over the next two hours. we we'll just give uh, Shea the week. From yeah. Monday to Friday, it's open-door sure. policy for Shea. Uh, <laughs> and kind of the Jordy Collada show vibe. Yeah, it's without good. a doubt. It's all good. Are we started at um, 7 every morning, y'all do? Uh, <laughs> and, and you know Shea covers, uh, covers LSU for 247 Sports. Uh, he reported on Monday that LSU is the team to beat for Burns. Um, obviously, him being a South Louisiana kid, uh, and, and been committed to LSU for a significant amount of time during recruiting just over a year ago. Um, it, it seems like Major Burns has LSU on the top of the list. Uh, Dixon also noted, and I'm reading from 247, um, that Shea wrote, I would definitely call LSU the team to beat right now, and they're going to push for him given that they want to bulk up the safety room. This is what Shea writes over at 247. Uh, he also noted that Burns wasn't bothered by LSU's decision to go in a different direction during the recruiting process. Uh, this helps LSU's defensive Tiger staff, uh, Tigers defensive staff, uh, look a lot different uh, than it did when Burns was committed back in 2019. The LSU defensive staff, with uh, Bill Bush, uh, obviously was on staff as the safeties coach uh, during that time, uh, is no longer with the program. Uh, LSU reportedly has one scholarship remaining for the 2021 cycle, so it appears that Major Burns and LSU could may uh, could very much be a uh, a possibility. Uh, Burns only played in six games for Georgia as a freshman. Uh, he is a very talented football player, a very talented athlete. If you watch Madison Prep play over the past couple of seasons, Major Burns is a name that is going to jump out to you because. He was a two-way star for the Chargers uh, coming up. You could tell that he was going to be a defensive back at the next level, and here he is with his name in the transfer portal with LSU sitting on one scholarship uh, and, and, and looking for safety help, looking for, for, for help in that safety room. Uh, makes a lot of sense. We'll ask Shea about it when he comes in here uh, in the second hour and see if, uh, if, if, if LSU truly will be the landing spot. Uh, but we will uh, 
Uh, we will ask him about that coming up here shortly. Daily, we're brought to you by Johnson and Spillers Dentistry. Remember, uh, Dr. Johnson and Dr. Spillers have two locations for you, one in Gonzales, uh, the other right here in Baton Rouge. I'll be heading over to see Dr. Spillers next Thursday at the Baton Rouge location, Perkins Road, in between Segan and Blue Bonnet. Stop in and see Johnson and Spillers Dentistry. Also, you can check them out on Prepara Avenue out in Gonzales today. You can log online and schedule an appointment there, uh, but you can also uh, get in touch with them by dialing uh, this morning. If you are a new patient and you want to get in touch with Johnson and Spillers, dial this number. In fact, store it into your contacts list, 225-424-7370, 424-7370 with a 225 area code. That's Johnson and Spillers Dentistry, whether it's pediatric dentistry, whether it is uh, anything that you need done uh, for, uh, for, for help with, uh, your dentist needs. Get in touch with John Saul and Spillers Dentistry online, johnsawandspillers.com. All right, Hunt's going to be here uh, in a couple of minutes. We will talk to him about LSU baseball. Tigers are going to, uh, uh, are going to uh, be on the road this weekend for a three-game set versus Auburn. Uh, that'll start Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Last night, they got back into action and got a win over Southern 10-2 to uh, over at the box as uh, they will face... Auburn this weekend on the road. We'll talk to uh, Hunt about the state of the program going on the road. We'll also get some basketball tidbits uh, from Hunt as uh, it has been a very uh, a very active week uh, for Will Wade, Kim Mulkey, and the crew over with the LSU basketball program. We talked to Wade yesterday uh, right here on the Jordy Collada Show. If you missed it, check it out. Brought to you by RMB Builders. But I thought Coach Wade was very insightful on the direction of the program as far as recruiting the transfer portal compared to, uh, to recruiting uh, high school athletes right now, uh, how much left room, how much room is left uh, to, 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 to put this roster together uh, before next season. And, uh, you know, some of the, the, stays some of, some of the, 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 the current status of guys on the roster. In fact, he gave an update on Alex Fudge. Uh, and also gave an update on Darius Days. I think that's probably the quote that lived and breathed on from yesterday uh, out of that interview was was potentially uh, the door open for, for Darius Days to return if he does not get the information that he's looking for, which the deadline is Friday on this thing, so it could be very quick uh, with the turnaround. Uh, Andrew Messina asks, could, uh, could Shea give us an update on Arik Gilbert? Absolutely. We'll ask him mm, that's a great uh, question. about... Uh, uh, about Arik Gilbert uh, coming up here uh, during the second hour today when Shea stops by. All right, Hunt's in next. Uh, 8 a.m., we talk NFL Draft with Jim Nagy of the uh, the Reese's Senior Bowl. 8.30, we talk to maybe the hottest college baseball team in the country's head coach as Tulane right now uh, has won 13 uh, of their last 14. They're going into an enormous series with uh, East Carolina this weekend with ECU as they will be on the road. Coach Travis Jewett of the Green Wave will be here in the second hour today talking about the the success of his team up to this point and how big of a series it is this weekend uh, versus ECU. So very much looking forward to our conversation with Coach Jewett coming up here at 8.30, one hour from now uh, on the Jordy Collada Show. Driven and powered by Go Chevrolet every single day. We'll talk LSU baseball with Hunt Palmer next. Are you self-employed? then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com, to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com 
or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Relief Health, the only way to get your health care in 2021. In your home or on site, Relief is changing how health care is delivered to you. No more doctor's offices, no more waiting rooms. Download the app today, Relief Health, from the Apple or Google app stores. You can get connected to a local doctor in your community or just order a test directly without talking to a doctor. Their COVID tests are live, and right now they have the Moderna vaccine. Online at ReliefHealth.com or download the app from your Apple or Google app stores now. Relief Health, changing the way that healthcare is brought to you in 2021. Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show, presented by Go Chevrolet every single day, every Tuesday, 7.30. We catch up with Hunt Palmer of the LSU Sports Radio Network. Sorry about that. I'm going to watch that. Uh, as he is live inside of the UDL, we were talking a little basketball in the break. Uh, Adam Miller popped over the weekend. We talked about Xavier Pinson. Tari Eason came in from Cincinnati as the papers have cleared to the university, and he is an LSU Tiger. Adam Miller's paper should be coming in from Illinois sometime soon uh, here over the next two days. Um, but we talked to Will Wade yesterday here, uh, Hunt, 24 hours ago, right during this time slot, and told us how he was changing up his methods uh, of recruiting. Uh, but it looks like, again, another uh, stacked roster uh, going into the offseason for an LSU bas- a basketball program that last three years have been a, a tournament team. Yeah, I mean, Miller was probably a top five transfer mm-hmm. Um I mean, he was a top 40 player in the country coming out of high school, started every game for one of the best teams in the country, made more threes than any freshman in the Big Ten. You know, that's that's a guy that can play, and they need guys that can score, and went and got one of the best ones. He's a great athlete. He's not a great shooter yet, but he could be. He's uh, he's going to help a ton, and that's a, that was a huge add, and I don't get the sense that he's done. I, it's just that's the nature of this sport now. It's, it's no longer – get your guys in and coach them up over the course of four years. It's build your team for next year, and then we'll worry about the next year after that. It's you know not traditional, and it's probably not the way that most people enjoy it, and that probably includes coaches. But it's the nature of the beast. You want to play. You want to play. And the thing that I love about our coach is just tell me the rules. I'll, we'll go play. What, do you, what, what is the impact of the, of the transfer portal? Do you think it will be here early on? I mean, there's 1,400 basketball yeah, players. Yeah, I, I think it. it just cripples the, the mid-majors. I, you just you get a kid that proves after two years he can play, he's going to leave. I, I, it's Those teams in March make their runs because they've got – they start three seniors and two juniors and have two seniors coming off the bench that have played together for four years, and those guys aren't going to be there anymore. They're going to go 
you know, the elite guys are going to show up for a year and move on from the big programs, and they're going to try to the big programs going to try to backfill. I mean, that's just what happened to LSU this year. You had four guys potentially leave early. Well, we're just going to backfill with guys from other schools. Yeah. Um, Hunt Palmer joining us inside of the UDL here on this Tuesday. LSU baseball gets a win yesterday uh, back in action versus uh, versus Southern. 10-2 winners uh, for LSU. Uh, I was at game three over the weekend versus Arkansas, the only one that they were successful. They got beat by 14 runs combined in the first two games. Uh, Arkansas truly is the number one. T- I mean, they, they looked, you know, like a, a college baseball heavyweight. Uh, LSU did not. I thought that that was the most discouraging <laughs> thing in, in just watching no them. Joke. But just, just just player on player. You know, I mean, even though LSU's got pros, I mean, to see the difference in, in where LSU was kind of going into the season and what you thought and who you thought they were, but then really seeing a, a, a heavyweight in the sport and, and Hunt really and truly how far off. LSU is. I mean, this team is. There's no doubt. Uh, but they do have some real pieces. I mean, look, Marceau was right there with them. Uh, he pitched brilliantly for seven innings. And, you know, you had a chance to win that game. If you had a, any kind of pulse on offense, they didn't. Levis got beat up, and then you went to the back of the bullpen, and that game got away from you. It happens. And then you kind of pulled a rabbit out of your hat with Hilliard, and you got a big homer from Doty early, and you are able to, to get a game. Um you know, no, they're not. This is not a great team, and Arkansas is really good. I, I still wor- wonder about their starting rotation. Looked good against LSU, obviously, but that to me doesn't, you know, cement you as a, an elite team. Their record in winning series is what does that, and of course they're great on offense. They draw a lot of walks and they hit home runs. But yeah, LSU's got some work to do. The good news is there's some some youth on this team. It's got got some real ability, and it's not as if there's no hope for the future. Yeah. Um, what is the future right now? What do you think when you see LSU baseball and somebody gives you the future question? How do you, how do you feel about it? I, my future is the next three weeks. I mean, I just – I'm not going to start speculating. But they're going to try their hardest in three weeks, and then there will be some discussions. And that's – I mean, look, I don't, I don't try to hide behind a curtain here. I catch a check from LSU in the fall. Like, I just – not going to come on this show or any other show that I show up on and start talking about coaches' futures. That's not my job. I'll tell you, there's a pretty good athletic athletic director who's feeling pretty good about himself right about this very moment, and they'll have discussions. And I'm I'm worried about the next three weeks, and hopefully they can find somehow, some way to get in, um, to get into the postseason because I think that would benefit some of these younger players to see it and to, to play in it. And, you know, I think that I'd, I'd love for Marceau and Labus and those guys to have one chance to try to go, go out there and win a weekend. How is Auburn? <laughs> They're bad. Yeah. I mean, uh, finally, they, finally they, they catch a schedule they, break. They, they won one series uh, last week against Georgia. They lost the rest of them and swept three times. Uh, Jack Owens, probably their best starter. He doesn't really have any plus pitches. He's, you know, 89 with the heater and a little slider. There's just not, not much there. Got Tom Glavin's kid. He pitches a little bit. Um, and they got two. They got one great offensive player, Bliss. And so I realize there's there's a there's a there's a competitiveness to you if you play at this level. There's almost an arrogance to you if you play at this level. You put on an LSU jersey and you feel a certain kind of way. If I'm Alan Dunn in Pulmonary, I, I I sit there on Thursday morning and I look and I say, look, we're not going to let Bliss drive in three runs this week. If he wants to hit a solo homer at some point in the game, that may have. If there's two guys on, we're just not going to deal with it. They don't have anyone else that scares me. We're not dealing with Bliss. Rankin Woley's had a nice year for him. He played at LSU for a couple years. Uh, he's ended up having a nice career at Auburn, and he's a reasonable bat. But Bliss has, I think, six homers in conference plays, hitting over 300. Just don't deal with him. Get the rest of their bad hitters out and, and, and go win the series. That's, that's where I am. Auburn's just not very good. Yeah. Uh, Hunt Palmer joining us here. What did you make of Sam Burns making yeah. his PGA winning debut? He's been he's creeped around winner's circle a couple of times. In fact, he's held a held a fifty four hole lead a couple of times on, uh, on on tour, but but now crosses over, gets an invite to the Masters to the PGA, and gets a tour exemption for the next two years. That's right. And oh, by the way, goes over two million bucks. Yeah, we'll take that too. Uh, in the FedEx earnings. It was looking there for a second like it was going to be just a whole Shreveport day because Burns won on the PGA tour, and then I flipped over and David Toms was tied for the lead with like six holes to play. With Daly came went ahead of him, and then eventually Mike Weir won. It was about to be a Shreveport double dip there. 
There was just a weird little three-year run of Shreveport golfers with Burns and Philip Barbary and then Nathan Johnson and Eric Ricard and some of those guys. But Burns is the is the best of the crew. He was an, an elite, elite junior golfer to the point where he was left off the Walker Cup team, which is the junior Ryder Cup team, mm-hmm. and everybody made a big deal out of it. Um, it was just it was a team that had a bunch of really good players on it. Um, and he was kind of left off, but he was great college player. Immediately jumped right up the tour and didn't win immediately like Matt Wolf and Hovland and some of those guys, but was always you know around the mix and has you know crept into the top seventy five in the world and moving downward. He's he's got the whole package. He can he can hit the driver. He puts it like crazy. He's got a good demeanor. He works real hard. Um, he's got that Shreveport blood. Never hurts. Yeah. Uh, oh, but he's, did I see David Toms was in? It was in extras with John Daly on the senior tour. I, was, I just said that. <laughs> oh my bad. My bad. <laughs> not actively not listening. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, it's. I mean, Burns is, is going to win more. He's a really really good player. Hopefully, he's the next guy that is from LSU that contends for majors, and we can pull for him for for fifteen twenty more Daly's years. Still, he's still competing. He's got some like Christmas like Christmas Santa beard, and he's you out there just kind of just kind of stalking around. Hitting. He's got those loud mouth pants, which. Are He's just crazy, and he's got this the American goofy flag looking. Pants. I mean, that that brand, but yeah, yeah, all funky patterns and the beards out of control, and it's just bleach blonde. It's a yeah. It's if, a he ha- if, if you had known who he was, and he came on tour, like this guy's not mm-hmm. playing out here with us. Did I see where he's got a kid coming up? Kid's a stud. Yeah, little John is a stud, and he can hit it a mile. I love it, man. I love it. He played um, in that that father son deal where Tiger yeah. and his son played back last in the fall. Um. So, Hunt, what did you think of the uh, of the Bengals? You you you, pro- you you were going at the Bengals and telling them not to bangle it up. They did. Uh, did you think they bungled it? I mean, Jamar's great, and they would sit there and tell you, look, we spent a first-round pick in Jonah Williams. We've got another first-round pick in Riley Weaf that we signed. We think Xavier Suofilo's good at, at the guard spot. We took him early in the draft. We've invested there. We've got the offensive line taken care of. we got to get weapons. I would just – tend to disagree because you couldn't keep him upright at all last year and you signed this tackle reef to a one-year deal so we'll see i mean it 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 makes me gonna pull for him more because i love jamar Mm -hmm. and obviously burrow and i'll i'll be paying attention but i just think you ought to fortify that offensive line first and foremost but you know History would be on my side here. Not that I'm always right, but the Bengals are always wrong so it appears that that would be the case um what did you make of the draft any surprises Sure. I mean, I thought Terrace would have gone earlier than that. Uh, I guess the medical got him, even though it hadn't really been a chronic thing. Um, I thought Jacoby lasted longer than I may have thought that he would. Um, and then, you know, we'll see what Tyler Shelvin can do. Mm-hmm. I think I think Tyler Shelvin and Kerry Vincent hurt themselves not playing. That's what I think. And that doesn't – it certainly is – it applies to some people and not others. Clearly – you know, Jamar Chase, and I don't think Panay Sue will hurt themselves. But I think Kerry Vincent, if he comes back and plays a more prominent role in the defense, especially with the injuries that they had, yeah. spend some time on number one. You know, if he's chasing Kadarius Toney around or you know, spending time on those Alabama receivers, maybe you know he's got a chance to improve himself. Instead, he's out of sight, out of mind, kind of hoping you'd show up at a pro day and run a blazing time because you're a track star. But maybe we'll see. I, th- I think he's going to make a team. And then Shelvin, look, I – the way he showed up after the quarantine probably would have hurt him anyway. So you try to just trim the weight. But, God, that guy, last year he was a top top 40 pick the way he was playing. And to you know sit out a year and then go all the way back in the fourth round, bummer. Yeah, and we had Stingley Sr. on yesterday, and he talked about some of the guys that he got feedback from at the next level that talked about, you know, some of the opt-outs really hurt people. You know, not necessarily a Jamar Chase or a Panay Sewell, but, you know, some of those guys were, were dinged because of the decision to opt out by, by guys at, at the next level. so um, And I think another good thing for college football, I mean, it's all relative, but you'll get where I'm going, is that Jalen Waddell went where he went. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you're that good, mm-hmm. and we think medicine's pretty good these days, we, we still think you're that good. Now, you get an Alex Smith injury. You're because or, of the injury. Right, yeah. he got hurt, and he was still a top eight pick or whatever he was. Yeah. I mean, you know, you could have an Alex Smith, you could have a, you know, a Lattimore, where you know it's over, but more often than not, they still think you're a pretty good player and they'll take you. Uh, I've seen a lot of mock drafts that have Stingley Jr. no no nowhere outside of the top four next year. But then when they talk about LSU and they analyze the football team next year, they're talking about the talent that's coming out. I don't think that it's a big secret now nationally what LSU's roster is going to look like 
next season. What is the expectation for this this program going back into a a, a, a regular college football season? The expectation is to get to a, a New Year's Six Bowl or whatever they're calling that, Access Bowl, whatever whatever those things are. The expectation is to get to that. Um, it's just difficult for me to sit here and tell you you got to go to Tuscaloosa and win. They've done it, but you don't do that. You're not going to Atlanta. So, I mean, I just don't think Alabama's going to lose two games. They've done it once in the last decade. So, the expectation is to uh, – it's going to be a good team, I think. No matter who's playing quarterback, I just I think they got a lot of talent all over the place. Schedule's always brutal, but it's going to be a good team. Um, what do you think about Dylan Moses not getting drafted? You and I were. Around. I had no idea about that. I, I, I mean, I, I noticed it when it when it people were tweeting about it when it didn't happen. I was he just hurt? He just hurt that bad. He he tore he he tore his meniscus um, last season and played on it. Yeah. Played on a torn meniscus coming off of an ACL. He got shot up every game in his knee last season. Before every game that he played. He got shot up, and then uh, he did not give or did not have medical information available yeah, well, that's for it. teams. I mean, I, well, that's I, it. I read there was 12 teams that didn't even have him on the board. Well, I'm surprised it wasn't 30. I uh, know. I mean, I, I said the same thing. You don't thing. have anything? You 20. got hurt twice, and I can't see anything? Well, that's... Three teams made multiple requests yeah. for medical information, and they would not pass it over. So, so I mean, sign him? Jacksonville signed him in as, a, as, a, uh, um, as a free agent. Um but and then I, I kind of I fell into a hole last night, a Dylan Moses hole, and read where two years ago he almost gave it all up, like that he fell out of love with it, and that he didn't know whether or not he really wanted to keep going. And he got back for last season, and then to go through all of what he went through to play, uh, and now – where he's going to have to, you know, make his his launch point into the league as an undrafted free agent, um, it, it will be it will be interesting to see what what the pattern, uh, you know, what what the path is for for Moses and see if he sticks at the NFL level because um, you know you and I were around you high a lot during during those days when he he was playing. Everybody anticipated this day to be very joyous uh, for the Moses family, but like I said yesterday. Uh, he's got to be a cautionary tale at this point when you just think of all of the attention and all of the spotlight that he received at such a a young age. I mean, I know it was it was fun and kind of cool back when he was in eighth grade to think of him on the ESPN uh, cover of the magazine, but um, I mean, now to see kind of where it is. I think, you know, in reading what I read last night and to see where his mentality was, to see where his mental state was, I, I thought that there was a lot of that that went into it. Just yeah, burnout, well, just look, burnout, and expectation, and people with with their hands on you and hand out by you, and some of those families, some of those friends, just all types of people around you telling you what you have to be, what you're supposed to do, and you know all the while maybe figuring out I don't know if I love it, I don't know if I really like it. And well, Dylan, I got a little bit of advice. I've worked three day jobs, uh, nine to five. Give this a shot. No doubt. <laughs> Give it a shot. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, it's it, it, it's a great. Uh, it, I mean, it's it, it's a great job. I mean, obviously, um, but you know, I mean, honey, anything that you do, no, I mean, you all that makes a lot of sense. Like it, I'm just saying, if you don't like it, give it a shot. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, all right. So baseball this weekend, next three weeks, uh, is this a pulmonary special? Do you think that he pulls a rabbit out of his hat with this team, like we've seen him do so many times? I mean, there's nothing that would indicate that, but I'm I'm hopeful. I mean, th- these three teams are playing aren't that good, and you know you've got a got a real ace coming at you next weekend from Alabama. But outside of that, you, you got a chance and. I'm curious to see what the selection committee will do because the SEC has clearly proven more so than any other year that it's the the best of the best and that they sh- they should be given benefit of the doubt come selection Monday. But if you post 13 wins, you're you may be on the outside looking in. 14, uh, you don't even have it's a it's a it's a slam dunk. I mean, their RPI is like 22 right now. Yeah. But if if you post 13, you got a bit of an issue. So they got they got work to do. Good seeing you, brother. All right. See you all. all right, man. Hunt Palmer of uh, the LSU Sports Radio Network. Any podcast you need to promote? Nothing right at now? the moment. No. Nothing right now. Uh, all right, but you can always catch him on the LSU Sports Radio Network pre and post game for LSU football, uh, filling in uh, for baseball as he did on play by play this year 
Uh, masterful work. Uh, we'll be back to close at hour one of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered every single day uh, uh, by Go Chevrolet, G E A U X Chevrolet.com is where you can find that crew online. They've got a brand new used car lot on Florida Boulevard, Go Express Auto Sales, which is the newest member of the Go Chevrolet family. Stop in and see Nick Lee and the crew down in Laplace, Louisiana, whether you're traveling to New Orleans, coming from South Louisiana, very convenient off of the Laplace exit. Stop in and see them on Airline Highway. Go Chevrolet, G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com. We'll close at hour one next. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oaks Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the bank statement loan program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Relief Health, the only way to get your health care in 2021. In your home or on site, Relief is changing how health care is delivered to you. No more doctor's offices, no more waiting rooms. Download the app today, Relief Health, from the Apple or Google App Stores. You can get connected to a local doctor in your community or just order a test directly without talking to a doctor. Their COVID tests are live, and right now they have the Moderna vaccine. Online at ReliefHealth.com or download the app from your Apple or Google App Stores now. Relief Health, changing the way that healthcare is brought to you in 2021. Welcome back in here on this Tuesday edition of the Jordy Colada Show. Good stuff from Hunt Palmer, presented every day by Go Chevrolet. Remember, the official insurance company of the Jordy Colada Show is Hub International. Stop in and see Hub International. They are online. They're official insurance agency of the New Orleans Saints, Pelicans, and the Jordy Colada Show. Looking forward to our lunch today with uh, with Hub International. As uh, we'll be out and about, if uh, jump inside of the show, if you're watching, doesn't matter if you're on YouTube, Facebook, JordyColladaShow.com. We appreciate the uh, the interaction, the likes, the shares, all of the comments, everything that goes on to interacting with us here on the Jordy Collada Show. We're looking forward to our conversation with Jim Nagy, who is the Senior Bowl President, Reese's Senior Bowl CEO and President. He's done a tremendous job of bringing back uh, a lot of attention to that game. Uh, as uh, it was uh, on display at the NFL Draft. 41% of the players selected in the NFL Draft were Senior Bowl participants. That's 106 overall, which is a huge number. 
Shout out to uh, two thirty. So how many Jim picks? Nagy? What's that? How many picks? Out uh, two thirty. Yeah. Wow. I mean that's. Wow. I mean nearly fifty percent, forty one percent of the entire draft represented uh, by by the Reese's Senior Bowl. So we'll talk to uh, to Nagy about some of the uh, some of the guys that stood out to him in the process. Maybe some of the steals that he saw coming off of the draft. We'll get his thoughts on the LSU contingency and obviously uh, look forward to next season uh, and see who. Uh, he's got a top of that big board, and where does Derek Stingley Jr. You hear uh, other draft news? Uh, Zach von Rosenberg signed with the Vikings. That. Yeah, Minnesota Vikings uh, picked up the strong-legged punter out of Zachary, Louisiana. Zach von Rosenberg uh, was uh, was picked up uh, via free agency by the Minnesota Vikings. Not good for him. I just uh, that age. I didn't know if anyone was going to yeah. touch him. But I think I if any if if there is any position in the NFL yeah, that right. could probably get past the age barrier, it would be punter. And just the athleticism he has. Like, he obviously, you know, got drafted to play Major League Baseball. There's some uh, there's some footage out there of when we had a little quarterback trouble yeah. from last year of him kind of spinning the rock a little bit in the practice facility. It looks kind of good. Yeah, well, I mean, if you go back to his days at Zachary, man, I mean, he was a legitimate two-way star. I mean, he, I mean, a two-sport star. I mean, he was multi-sport athlete coming out of uh, Zachary, including a quarterback for the football team. Uh, Baylor filled their women's job, and they've done it with Atlanta Dream Coach Nikki Collin. Uh, Nikki Collin is uh, is leaving the WNBA to take over the Baylor women's basketball team. That was announced yesterday. She replaces, of course, Kim Mulkey, uh, who is now at LSU. Uh, Collin became the Dream's head coach prior to the 18 season. They went 38 and 52 in her three years there. Her first season was her best season, where she took the Dream to 23 and 11 record and took him to the WNBA semifinals prior to her time with the Dream. She was an assistant for uh, two N- uh, WNBA seasons with the Connecticut Sun. She's got some uh, college basketball um, some college basketball experience as she's worked on Louisville staff, Arkansas staff, uh, and Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, so uh, Nikki Collin has been announced as the head coach replacing uh, Kim Mulkey. Pretty good replacement. Uh, that is a very good replacement. Uh, in, in replacing Coach uh, Coach Mulkey, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates are getting divorced. She's about another <sighs> powerful divorce. I mean, we saw Bezos and his wife split up just a couple of uh, just over probably over a year ago. And she became the most uh, rich every, woman. Yeah, in, in, in a blink of, of an eye. Um, I wonder if that puts a little seed in your head. Twenty-seven yeah. <laughs> years of marriage, bro. I never mean, saw this one coming. I, I never – something has to be going on behind the scenes here. I mean, Kelly and I were reading at least some of the press releases last night, and I'm saying to myself, and we're talking out loud, like, all right, man, they're leaving a, they're leaving a couple of juicy details out here, right? I mean, nearly 30 years of marriage, and you're going to give up on this thing? Well, my, my whole thing is, what could they be juicy about? Bill Gates seems like the most boring person of all time. Sweaters, man. But you've got to believe there's some thought somewhere trying to get in on Bill Gates' money. Right, yeah, and I, just, I, mean, I think he would not be interested. Room. He may not be interested, but you got to believe that there's somebody out there trying That's to make a play conspiracy. for that cash, bro. Sliding into Bill Gates' DMs. Don't you believe? You better be using that Oxford comment and semicolons. Or maybe colons. somebody slide into Melinda's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bro, I don't know. Let me pull up these I'll pictures. i for the team, guys. <laughs> we'll get the new water cooler. Look, look at how they're so wholesome. Identical tweets yesterday. The Microsoft co-founder and his wife said that they made a decision to end their marriage of 27 years after a great deal of thought and a lot of work on the relationship. We have made the decision to end our marriage. Over the last 27 years, we have raised three children and built a foundation that works all over the world to enable people to lead healthy productive lives we continue to share a belief in that mission and will continue our work at the foundation but we no longer believe (laughs) we can grow together as a couple in the next phase of our lives we ask for space and privacy for our family as we begin to navigate this new life it's always it's always funny to ask for privacy on a public platform not only that but i just don't how long do you think that divorce settlement or Whatever, when they made that decision, how long do you think that took? Like, how many conversations did those two people have? Two very smart people are like, all right, let's weigh the pros and cons of this. Like, it was not an emotional decision at all. It was very much a let's sit down, pen and paper, and decide why we're doing this and how we're going to break everything up. Like, I don't think there was a door slammed. Just business. Just business. Right? Just business. Um, So, another high-profile divorce case uh, as Bill and Melinda Gates call it quits after 27 years uh, of marriage. Is that the uh, most surprising divorce? 
And I guess you, I mean, he's a celebrity. Like, I just thought they were kind of set. Yeah, no, I thought for sure that they were set. Um, surprising, sure. I mean, I, the most surprising. Yeah, what's the most surprising? I don't know. Um, surprised by any divorce. I saw that J Lo and uh, and Ben Affleck trying to rekindle. J Lo's playing some evil games with old A Rod's head, boy. Oh, She's messing way. with A Rod, and she has to know A Rod has, has like the easiest head case of all time yes. to get into. And, oh, really? <laughs> and you know some of her dudes in her list are like, bro, he is fragile, so you can play this cat if you want. You can spin him like a top. I mean, we saw that from when his Instagram video, like he was already heartbroken when he was filming, you know, them drawing in the sand together and all the pictures of their kids together. And it was like a day, wasn't even a day old yet, and he was still fragile. So I can't imagine where he is now when he's got Ben Affleck kind of shielding her or whatever you want to call it next thing you know he's gonna be living in minnesota bro he's gonna be all down and out the timberwolves are gonna suck timberwolves yeah. don't we know who he is yeah, that's, right. <laughs> hey, who? that's right oh goodness. Uh, all right hour two we'll talk more about it coming up here on the jordy colada show travis jewett's gonna stop by at 8 30 two lane green wave hit baseball coach uh as the wave right now one of the hottest teams in the country with an enormous series on the horizon this weekend we will talk to coach jewett about it coming up here on the jordy colada show uh, we will also talk to Jim Nagy coming up here in just a couple of minutes and get his thoughts on the NFL draft and see where we go from here going into next season, his thoughts on next season's draft as we get prepared. Remember, Daily, we're brought to you by uh, Elevate, uh, Elevate Drug and Treatment Center, which is located right here in Baton Rouge off of uh, Jefferson Highway. Uh, and Elevate is dedicated to treating patients who are battling drug and alcohol addiction. Their goal is to guide you in the steps towards recovery and help you achieve and maintain sobriety online elev the number eight treatment.com that's elevate treatment.com you can sign up online if uh if you'd like you can sign up right there uh once you get to the site uh look they know over at elevate treatment that this is a difficult decision whether it's for you whether it's for a loved one they give you uh immense privacy where you can sign up online there's also a direct uh, number uh, that you can dial in to elevate treatment uh, get in touch with them this morning. E L E V, the number eight treatment.com. We'll reset and talk to Jim Nagy about the NFL draft when we come back here on the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered every day by Go Chevrolet. Are you self employed? then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com, to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Abear over at Abear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Abear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Relief Health, the only way to get your health care in 2021. In your home or on site, Relief is changing how health care is delivered to you. No more doctor's offices, no more waiting rooms. Download the app today, Relief Health, from the Apple or Google app stores. You can get connected to a local doctor in your community or just order a test directly without talking to a doctor. Their COVID tests are live, and right now they have the Moderna vaccine. Online at ReliefHealth.com or download the app from your Apple or Google app stores now. Relief Health, changing the way that healthcare is brought to you in 2021.
Welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show. Second hour here on this Tuesday, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Full crew in house. Jack's here. Katie's here. Lloyd's here. Looking forward to our next conversation <laughs> as uh, we talk to uh, a, a very much a friend of our show, a resource that you see all over the place, whether it's breaking down the Senior Bowl, uh, which has experienced so much success over the last couple of seasons since he's been the director over there at the Reese Senior Bowl. Uh, and to breaking down the draft, man, he was everywhere last week. NFL Network, uh, all over the sites that cover uh, the NFL draft and ESPN. So we always appreciate his time checking in uh, from Mobile, uh, the home of the Senior Bowl. I saw 41% of the players selected in last week's NFL draft uh, were at the Senior Bowl. 106 total players selected that were represented down in Mobile the week uh, of, uh, of January. Uh, we welcome in Jim Nagy to the, uh, the conversation back here on the Jordy Collada Show from the Reese's Senior Bowl. Good morning, Jim. How are you? Good morning, brother. Thanks for having me back on. Absolutely, man. Um, that, that's that's got to be uh, – you're a great recruiter. I know that you spend a lot of your, your time recruiting away from the game and looking at prospects and looking at guys to bring into Mobile for that week of evaluation. To see that number, 41% of the guys that were selected last week, that's got to be that's got to be a success story for, for your organization. Uh, yeah, it is. We're, I'm really proud of the staff this year. As, as you know, we, we've talked about it. It was a, a hugely challenging year with COVID. Obviously, um, you know, we didn't even we weren't even uh, full speed ahead on having the game until like late October. So we really figured out how we could do it safely. So um, the goal was 105, and we hit 106. Uh, we're just trying to get better than we've we've done in the past. And um, we did over invite a little bit this year by about 12 players. Um, and we've been at 93 players each of the last two years. Um, so we were just basing it off percentage. We Percentage-wise, we wanted to get better. And we lost a lot of guys, you know, like guys like Kerry Vincent had, had, you know, initially had accepted the invite to the game. And, uh, you know, someone must have talked him out of coming. And uh, But that happened with, with some of these COVID guys and the opt-out guys. I, I don't know if it was like fear of the rust factor or what have you. So, um, you know, our, our numbers actually took a negative hit that way with some of the guys that, that I think we would have normally gotten. I mean, Kerry went in the seventh round. So, um, you know, but so to get 106, we were, we were really happy about that. Uh, we asked you about it going into the draft. You were fully supportive of the Bengals choosing Jamar Chase at five and reuniting with Burrow. They made the selection. Uh, what, what's your thoughts of it now that it's, it's made and, and Jamar and Joe are in Cincinnati together? Yeah, I mean, they had an elite playmaker. So how do you really knock them for it now? Had I, if I were making the decision, would I have an offensive line? Probably, but I think Chase is better than any of the offensive linemen there. Um, I, to me, there wasn't an elite, elite tackle um, in this draft. So uh, I understand it. But, I mean, the biggest thing is keeping Joe upright. So <laughs> you need to accomplish yeah. that as well. Um, and they did. They, they picked some guys up front, and they'll do a better job. They've got some young guys. I mean, Jonah Williams, their left tackle, is still a relatively young player. And he's missed a lot of time. So um, that thing will come together. And uh, I just think it's going to be exciting to watch Joe and uh, Jamar do their thing again. The quarterback was the story of the draft. How, how did you – what did you make of how this thing shook out uh, of Trey Lance going three, Justin Fields going to Chicago, Mac Jones going to, to New England? Uh, what did you make of the quarterback shakeout of this, this 2021 draft? Yeah, I think I think uh, you know Trey's going to be. We we all knew what the first two picks were going to be. That that was pretty easy with Zach Wilson going to the Jets and, and Trevor Lawrence obviously going to Jacksonville. But I think Trey was a, a good choice for San Francisco. Um, he's just got such a ceiling. And, and again, I don't think he needs to play right away. I mean, even the people around Trey don't think he needs to play right away. So that that's a good situation going there with Jimmy G. He won't be forced on the field. Um, but just when you look at the power in his arm. Um, and what he can do running the football athletically. I mean, there, there's it, it's really exciting to think about what what Trey could be in, in you know two three years down the road with some development in that system. And they've got good players. That that is a team ready to win. Um, so that's a good roster around him. They've got a good defense. There won't be too much pressure on the offense. He's got skill players. Um, they're good up front. So that's a great situation. Um, you know, Chicago, that'll be interesting. I think they're really going to be forced to uh, get Justin on the field, Justin Fields on the field early. Um, don't know if that's the best thing. I mean, they have Andy Dalton, but I just know from a fan base perspective, they are going to be clamoring to get Justin Fields out there. Um, so we'll see. And I think Mac Jones, I mean, I, I talked to Mac after 
after the draft, and he was probably a little disappointed about going not going three because there's a lot of money between that three yeah. and 15 spot. But in terms of, like, setting himself up for success long term, New England was the best spot for him. I mean, that's such a good fit. I mean, I, I worked there for a long time. I worked with Josh McDaniels the whole time I was there for, for eight years. And, uh, you know, they can go back to uh, playing Patriots-style football that everyone's been accustomed to seeing with Tom Brady. You know, I hate to draw that comparison because Tom's obviously the best of all time and won seven Super Bowls. So it's a little bit hyperbole. But when you when you just break down what they are, you know, from the skill set perspective, you know, makeup perspective, how they're wired, um, they're very, very similar guys. So they can structure it the same way they've always done. And uh, really, to me, the interesting thing, well, what will they do this year? You know, because he and Cam are so dissimilar. He and Cam Newton, like, what are they going to do for this year? What kind of offense are they going to build? Because if, if they build something that fits Cam and then he goes down, you're going to have to completely switch stuff up. Uh, you're going to have to completely change it up to go to Mac. So that'll be interesting. But long term, I thought that was a really good fit for Mac Jones. Oh, Jim, I saw some stuff on Twitter that you put out about the Julian Edelman draft where you had scouted him in the, 2000 fall, uh, the 2008 fall background report, and you have uh, likes the BS. So I just, I'm more interested in how that goes over in a New England like scouting room with people like Ernie Adams and Bill Belichick and how much you feel heard there. Um, that a guy likes the BS? Yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it's an interesting way to, to portray Edelman because it's very true. Like it's spot on in, in my mind. Yeah, I mean, that's not really the building that you want to be BSing in, but, um, you know, all you're trying to do as a scout is paint the right picture of the guy, right? Um, And that's kind of what guys do at New England. They kind of check their personality at the door until they get into that locker room. I mean, the locker room is any any team sanctuary. I mean, what goes on in the locker room, you you can't really have too much control over that if you're you're a coaching staff or a front office. I mean, what goes on in there stays in there, and they do their thing. But outside of it, yeah, you check your personality, and you – and you go to work. Um, the whole do your job mantra. I mean, I lived it for a long time. I know what it's all about. So, um, but Jules obviously had a great career. I mean, I, I thought he would he would make the league as a receiver. He had he had all the athletic ability to do it. He was an unbelievable change of direction athlete, and a great instinctive player. Um, but to have the career he had, he's going to go down as one of the all time greats in franchise history. I, I I would never sit here and say I saw that. Do you still think that you carry some of that do your job with you? Like, even when you have to talk about the Patriot way or something like that, is it still ingrained in you to not really say what you want to about the Patriots? Like, is it still secretive um, to you? Well, I mean, guys, you got to understand. I'm, a, I'm in a unique perspective. I mean, I'm, I'm part of the media now because I do ESPN stuff, but I can't just, like, shoot from the hip and say what I want to say when, yeah. when I've got relationships with all 32 teams that I need to be, you know, aware of. And then also at the college level, I can't come up blasting college coaches, how they use players or blasting players because of, of what I think they are. Because I, I got to go back into these schools next year and recruit players out of there. Mm-hmm. So, and the same thing with the NFL. Like, I, I include all 32 teams in our selection process. I mean, I reach out to those guys. I'm not – we do all our work here, and we watch all the tape, and we write reports, and we've got a scouting staff. But, I mean, who has the ego to think they have all the answers? So, I mean, I lean on these guys. So, I'm not going to come out – I mean, I, I've got my own feelings on a lot of things, but I can't come out publicly and, and blast anything. So, um, but, yeah, do I take the do-your-job mantra? I, I still kind of live that way. I mean, there's – you, you, if you focus on what you're doing and, and do it to your best, I mean, big things are going to happen. A lot of a lot of people get focused on stuff they can't they can't control, and that's just uh, that's really one big takeaway from working there is just focus on what you can control and do your job. This may be a question that that you just tried to detour me from, but but I have to get your opinion on this because you spent time around him in Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. You won. Uh, you, you were a part of six Super Bowls in your 18 years as an NFL scout, and four of those were winning Super Bowls, uh, three of those, two of those in New England, one in Seattle, and the other one uh, being in Green Bay. Uh, what do you make of this Aaron Rodgers situation that, that, that he's the MVP right now and it seems like there's some discourse between him and management? Yeah, it's really unfortunate. I mean, I was well, I was there well before Aaron's time. I was there in 96 with, with Brett and Reggie the year they won the Super Bowl. Um, so Aaron, I, I way predate Aaron up in, up in Green Bay, but uh, – yeah, it's really unfortunate. You know, like how it all came down around draft weekend. I mean, guys, that was choreographed. I mean, that was yeah. that was done on purpose. And uh, you know, Aaron came out at the Kentucky Derby and said it was unfortunate that things got leaked. I mean, that's laughable to me. Um, I just, you know, it, it, it is on draft weekend for that to come out. Those guys have worked all year. I see everything through like a scout's lens. 
And and I know how hard those guys work and what they sacrifice being away from their families 200 nights a year and the rigors of that job. And then to have that bomb dropped on your organization when you're trying to focus on building the team um, wasn't the coolest thing, <laughs> that's for sure. But I know those guys, have, they're trying to make it work. They're, they're trying to make it where they're doing everything they can to uh, to make Aaron happy. And, again, I, I don't know if it's what Tom Brady did in Tampa this year, having input, but Tom Brady's won seven Super Bowls, right? Like, let's not put anyone else in Tom Brady's category. I mean, there, there's a reason why Tom's won seven and Aaron's won one, and it's not talent, and it's not talent around him. Um, you can make a case Aaron's more talented than Tom. Well, why does one have seven Super Bowls and the other one has one? So, yeah, it's just a, it's an unfortunate situation. I hope they get it. I hope they get it smoothed out. What a great answer, Jim Nagy, checking in from the Reese's Senior Bowl here on the Jordy Colada Show. I, I know it's not your job to talk about winners and losers in the draft, and I don't even know how you do that when you look at look at the the, the, the overall players. But the New Orleans Saints are trying to do life after Drew Brees uh, for the first time ever with Sean Payton and Mickey Loomis as the director of the draft. They went Payton Turner, a defensive end out of Houston, uh, in the first round, and then they focused a lot on uh, on defense, but they ended up picking up a quarterback and Ian Book out of Notre Dame in the fourth round that they made a move to go get. Um, not not necessarily the overall grade uh, of the New Orleans Saints draft, because I know that's not your market, but just when you think of life after Breeze and what the Saints are trying to identify themselves as, what do you make uh, of their draft picks and kind of uh, now what life looks like and feels like for New Orleans? I mean, I think I think they did a good job. All you're trying to do is get good football players, and they got good football players up and down the draft. You weren't going to get a quarterback in the in the late 20s that you really felt confident was going to be, you know, the heir apparent there. So, um, you know, with with Ian Book, um, I thought it was a good pick because in the fourth round, what you're doing is you're you're drafting a backup player, right? I mean, that's regardless of any position. You're you're, you're drafting on day three. You're drafting a guy that you think can become a core member of your team from a backup perspective, but and there's some quarterbacks that you draft, and you're like, you know what, this guy's a career backup. That's the ceiling. That's what he's going to be. And if we if we get you know four or five good years out of him as a backup, and it, it gives us some cap relief, and we can move on from a higher price veteran backup, well then great. You know the pick the pick was was served its purpose. But um, I think Ian's got a chance maybe to be a little more than that. You know, just scouting guys like Case Keenum and chase daniel and things like that i mean i think there's some similarities to those players and those guys have won i mean those guys have those guys have won when they've had the chance ian's or ian's a good athlete my first exposure to him was a couple years ago down in thibodeau at the man camp uh really bouncy athlete he can move around do a lot of things you know off script which you're going to have to do as a young quarterback if you get thrown into the fire um it's, just, it's tough at that level you know to process and 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 see things clearly. So you got to have the ability to run around a little bit. Neen can do that. And what I really liked about him is he made a really nice jump um, from last year to, uh, from his junior year to his senior year. And you don't always see that. You usually see that jump, you know, from year one to year two as a starter. And then there's usually a little bit of a leveling off. But uh, I really think where Ian made strides was knowing when to use his legs um, and not just taking off and really being more patient with his reads and, and uh, making good decisions that way, not like good decisions in terms of you know where where he's throwing the ball to, but but when to you know when to take off and when to uh, you know when to stay patient, and then and then also throwing down the field. He just he, he gave guys more chances. He looked more confident in his in his teammates. You know, Skoranek and uh, God, who was the other receiver that that went as an undrafted free agent? They had another good one there too. Oh yeah, uh, Javon McKinley. Um, he did a good job with those guys and. Uh, so, yeah, that's, to me, that's a good pick. In the fourth round, I mean, shoot, I, I think you're getting a guy that's going to make your team at the quarterback position, and, and they need depth, certainly. I mean, they got Jameis and, and Taysom, but beyond that, um, this, this gives them another guy. Last one, Jim, we'll get you out of here. It looks like LSU's got a top three pick in the 2022 draft in Derek Stingley Jr., but I know that you've been on the evaluation for this class for a while. What's, what's the 22 group look like, and how's the recruiting process looking uh, for next January, as I know you guys have been, uh, you've been on the 2022 class for probably over a year now. Yeah, we've been on 2022 since uh, the middle of February, but I have not. Oh, wow. <laughs> so <Yeah>. anything, <laughs> if you see if, if you see any of these way too early mock drafts coming out, yeah. you better be suspect of the people putting them out because why wouldn't they put more time into this year's draft? That's is right. my thing. Uh, I haven't looked at any of that, honestly. Um, our, our staff has, we're almost all the way through all the power five schools. I got a ton of, of catching up to do these next few months. So, um, of course I've seen some players, you know, looking at this year's tape and you'll, 
you'll see a guy pop and, 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 you know, kind of look, uh, check him out. But, you know, we're, we are in a little bit of a unique standpoint this year. We had eight or nine guys that accepted senior bowl invites that got talked into coming back to school by the coaching staff. So um, we are, we do have a little bit of head start that way, but the nice thing is the haze in the barn from our staff. I mean, they've done an awesome job. They've been cranking for months now. Um, so now it's my job to kind of play follow up. I just know being at the LSU pro day, those guys really like Stingley. I talked to him. I talked to a couple guys on the staff about him. Um, that re- that are that are spent a lot of time with with Stingley, and they really like him as a player, and they think he's a great one. And these are guys that have you know been around great players, so um, exci- I'm excited to see him. But I, I can't give you an in depth report on him because I just haven't I haven't studied him enough. Is that just film and phone for you over the next couple of months on catch up? Are you just watching film and just working the phones? Yeah, mostly film, mostly film. I don't like to bother guys in the summer; that's their time off. But I will. I'll reach out to mostly guys on the college level. I'll leave my in the NFL alone. Uh, when I talk to them, it's more about family and just catching up. But um, yeah, I'll call. I'll call a lot of guys from college level just to make sure we're we're on the right guys. But but our staff watches everyone. They'll watch all the senior starters and guys that are contributors. So like, I mean, we had Racy McMath in the game this year, guys, and and he wasn't even a starter there. You know, like full time guy. We had Stephon Sullivan the year before. So um, we're looking at everybody. So no one should slip through the cracks if we're doing it the right way. But it's always good to get the input of the of the staff because they'll tell you about guys like Racy, you know, they'll tell you about the testers. That's, that's the hard part. One of the hard parts of putting our roster together in November and December is that there is no pro day. We don't know anything about the medical information. We, we don't have as a good a sense as the teams do on the character side of things. So that's it. I'll call a lot of strength coaches and say, try to yeah. figure out who's going to be the test guys next, uh, next pro day season. Uh, the man, Jim Nagy from the senior bowl, the Reese's senior bowl, uh, he has been very busy over the last couple of weeks breaking down the 2021 draft, and as you heard, he is now about to dive into the 2022 group as uh, the Reese's Senior Bowl will originate from Mobile yet again uh, in January, and we appreciate his time and knowledge as always. Thank you, man. We'll talk soon. Yeah, guys. All right, man. There is uh, Jim Nagy checking in this morning uh, from uh, Mobile talking about the, uh, the hmm. Senior Bowl there. Makes you think how were his thoughts on Aaron and, yeah, and Tom as wow. he's met both of them. <laughs> wow. Wow. And that is somebody as connected in NFL circles and knows all the gossip, right? I mean, he's got contacts at all 32 teams and contacts that are with, like, in the fifth ring of the Pentagon type contacts. I mean, deep within franchises and programs. And to hear that feedback, I mean, now, 30 seconds before that, he gave you an answer saying that he's got to really kind of stay political, right? Because of both of the relationships that he has on the college and NFL level. And then we ask him about Rodgers, and he goes in, goes in on Rodgers. Couldn't so hold that, my tongue on that. That has to be something that is probably pretty well known in the league. Well known and widely accepted. I mean, that opinion, I mean, for him to preface the answer 30 seconds before that, saying how crucial it is for him to stay and maintain relatively relationships. political yeah. to, to, to maintain relationships on both sides of the line on both sides of the aisle Even and the then go elbow. in on the MVP of the league with some with some like some personal fact like not some personal but like some facts like some stuff that that he's obviously got on the ch- on 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 feedback gotten in in feedback um that was in, that was a great answer yeah, it, was, <laughs> it, it, it was a great answer it also makes me wonder if it was Rogers based or almost culture based about being in Green Bay and being in the, in in New England, like of of what, just how they run their camps well, uh, two it, totally different it, ways. Didn't he make it sound like like that Aaron Rodgers is like an attention whore? Yeah, you know, like I mean, like he couldn't he couldn't let this weekend pass without stealing the spotlight from all these guys that have worked so hard, hard to get to this point, and now Rodgers is going to sabotage the weekend and then have the audacity at the Kentucky Derby to say. I don't know how that got out. I mean, like, Nagy was smart. I mean, he was, like, scoffing at that. But yeah, it seemed like he was frustrated by it a little bit because he's been in that position of being a scout. But if you want to look at it from the other side, if you're Aaron Rodgers, like, well, last time I didn't say anything, they went out and traded up and tried to draft my replacement. <laughs> yeah. Like, so I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna say something. Go get, me a, go get me a GD weapon over here, or else I'm going to leak something and smile at the Kentucky Derby looking skinny. Uh, yes, he did look very skinny. Uh, Daily, we are brought to you right here on the Jordy Collada Show by Relief Health. Remember, get in touch with Relief Health. They are changing the way that healthcare is brought to you in 2021. In your home or on site, Relief is changing the way that you can get to a doctor's office. No more waiting rooms, 
No more doctor's offices. Mm -mm. Healthcare in the comfort of your own home. All, all you got to do is download the app. The app is named Relief Health. Just search that inside of your Apple and Google app stores, and uh, you can have it. In fact, if you are a business owner, uh, if you are uh, an employer, uh, Relief will come on site and administer to your employees today. They have the Moderna vaccine. They can get you help. Uh, Relief Health. Get in touch with them on the uh, on the app. Download the app today inside of your Apple and Google app stores uh, to uh, to get in touch with uh, with Relief Health. Good stuff from Jim Nagy. We'll talk to Travis Jewett coming up here uh, in a couple of minutes. We'll reset and come right back here on the Jordy Collada Show, brought to you daily by Go Chevrolet. I love that. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oaks Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com, to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Relief Health, the only way to get your health care in 2021. In your home or on site, Relief is changing how health care is delivered to you. No more doctor's offices, no more waiting rooms. Download the app today, Relief Health, from the Apple or Google app stores. You can get connected to a local doctor in your community or just order a test directly without talking to a doctor. Their COVID tests are live, and right now they have the Moderna vaccine. Online at ReliefHealth.com or download the app from your Apple or Google app stores now. Relief Health, changing the way that healthcare is brought to you in 2021. Welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Great stuff from Jim Nagy of the Senior Bowl. 
as uh, Nags got a little carried away there on you know, that, man. Those, uh, those scouting people, that, yes, that shit cuts deep, man. That's right, man. All right, uh, the hottest team in the country right now has to be Tulane Baseball. If you're not keeping up with the Greenies right now, you got to pay attention to what's going on down at Turchin Stadium as the Greenies right now, 13-2 and two in the AAC right now, 24-14, and 14, just moved in to two national polls and collegiate polls. 22 in perfect game, 24 in collegiate baseball. Uh, they also received some votes in the uh, National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association, and they are off on to an enormous matchup this weekend. ECU is, uh, is, is on the docket for Tulane. Coach Jewett has been asked about this game for the past couple of weeks. He has been saying, we're only caring about what's next on the schedule, and uh, East Carolina is next, and Coach Jewett is checking in this morning from New Orleans. Coach, good morning. Thank you for the time. Good evening, fellas. How are you? We are doing great. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. A little early this morning. Right on time for you, though, Coach. Did you catch my uh, good evening call there? I did. I did. I was going to let it slide. But... Yeah, it don't let that slide. I'm going to make sure you're on your toes. It's, it's 830, but I know you guys been up since probably 5 getting ready for this. I have, too. So, um, it's, there's no hours, you Coach. Me, man. I, I, uh, that intro is cool. It's uh, good to hear. Fired up for the kids and the coaches. You know, everybody's been working their butts off and, uh, you know, just trying to create some opportunities and represent the school well. So, big week ahead and uh, looking forward to it. I love how you're embracing it, Coach. I, I think a lot of people w w would say, hey, just next game up. But you've been asked about this one for a while and you've you've downplayed it. But now that we're here – you're, you're, you're saying bring it all on. We want the noise. We want the spotlight. We want this game to be as big as it's going to be hyped up to be. I got to imagine your kids are behind that notion going and traveling this week to ECU. Yeah, and if they're not, I still got a couple of days to get them there, mm -hmm. you know. But you're right. It's just uh, we're not, we're not going to run and hide from this. Uh, the rankings, the first place, uh, whatever it is that you want to say, those, those are – things that happen to worthy and capable people and organizations. And I think we have to embrace those. And, uh, you know, we've been working hard to uh, find some of these moments and, and we have them and it's just like anything, you know, sometimes I ask a kid in a big game, uh, you know, you'll say, uh, are you nervous? And then everybody wants to be like, Oh hell no, I'm not nervous. And I'm like, well, I'm nervous as hell because <laughs> you know, uh, that's called, that's called care. Yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah. when you're competing and there's a scoreboard on the field somewhere, uh, you know, someone's going to win and someone's going to lose. To me, that, that makes me nervous. But uh, what you have to do, old Coach Hertz used to tell me, you know, just get your butterflies flying in, flying in formation, trust your training. Um, and that's what I think our kids do well is that they're training well, guys. And uh, right now they're kind of getting um, what they're – putting in and what they deserve so um, big week and we're embracing the opportunity to go to kind of the powerhouse of the league the team that you know has been doing it consistently for a while and um, you know we know it's going to be a, a really good test but I think our kids are uh, ready to kind of you know get in the ring you know and uh, we always talk about keeping our dukes up and uh, you know just come out punching and and uh, you know have some fun doing it so Looking forward to the opportunity, and I know the kids are too. Tulane is number one in the AAC in ERA. East Carolina is second. ECU paces the league in batting average. Tulane is second. The Wave has Bennett Lee, who is, leads the AAC in hitting. ECU's Connor Norby is second in the league. I mean, Coach, this is the top two teams in your conference without question. It seems like the fall off to three is, is, is a mile. Um, what makes your pitching staff – so dominant right now as you lead the league with a 3.51 ERA? Well, you know, what we're doing, guys, on a, on a pretty regular basis is we're driving the ball over the plate. You know, uh, we're throwing strikes. We're um, getting ahead of hitters for the most part. And you guys know uh, hitting's hard as it is. And then when you're doing it with the strike up your rear end, uh, it becomes even harder. So the ability to chase the strike one and, and throw it over has been crucial. 
and then I will tell you, uh, we have some armed talent. You know, it's yeah. not just like it's strike one, but there's some veracity and some shape and some angle and all the other things that make hitting a round ball uh, with a round bat hard. So um, that's good. And then I would also say that, you know, Coach Latham, and I know we're not talking about the defense and the hitting, but Coach Ullman, those guys are hyper-prepared, man. They're, they're uh, scouting reports and how to get them out and how to, you know, defend them and all those types of things. And so when you put that combination a recipe into a pot and stir it up, um, then you've got a chance to kind of stay away from the opponent's barrel, so to speak, and uh, give yourself a chance to do that. And that's really what um, has been the difference, guys, is that we're, we're, uh, we're pitching the ball at a level that uh, has been fun to see. Well, that, yeah, Coach, 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 when you got a guy like Brady yeah. Althoff out there throwing when they, you know, striking out Mississippi State players left and right, they think he's pitching <laughs> so well, they think he's got a foreign substance on him. Could it have happened to a better guy, though? Just a guy with a personality that kind of took it on the shirt and said, come check me, bro. I'm good. <laughs> the, the, yeah. The, the glance like, at the dugout on the way back to, the, to your, your place was great. Yeah. That, I thought that was awesome. You know, uh, and no better guy, obviously. He's uh, such a good kid. He, he knows that, uh, you know, he's fine. There's no foreign substance there. It's just you guys should check the ball, really, because he's got wiffle ball. He throws wiffle balls, not baseballs. I, that's what I say to everybody. So it's not the substance. It's just the ability to manipulate the ball and spin it and pull it and dump it and throw his fastball for strikes in any count. I mean, it's just uh, it's fun to watch. So, yeah. Uh, you, have the, uh, good one. you have the best uniform in the sport. Mm-hmm. You guys may be the hottest team in the sport right now, winners of 13 of the last 14. From your point of view, what has it been over the last three weeks that has you so hot? I think it's it's a uh, it's a team game, mm-hmm. and uh, I think we're playing team baseball. We just got done talking about the glorification of the pitching. That that's the key to everything, fellas. Uh, the dirt circle in the middle of the field that's raised up above the rest of the surface. You know that that has to be, and if it's not, then it's not going to be. So we're getting that, and then with that, um, our defense has uh, cleaned itself up. Um, better we were in a span early where i think we were two and eight and one or two run games uh i would say that we would all agree we were leaving some plays on the field you know uh plays that were manageable and didn't require too much greatness it was just routineness which baseball is so that's cleaning up and then our offense is is starting to fire a little bit um that's been good um you know, Coach Ullman's doing a good job of getting our gears going offensively. And uh, and when you put it all together, um, then, you know, that's kind of, a like I said, a recipe for success. So that's what it's been. But in order for it to be, we, we got to keep it going. And, you know, we're just trying to stay humble and hungry, man. Just Coach, you talk, about, yeah, you talk about getting people to buy in, and I think the singular reason people are starting to get interested in buying in, not only the two-lane program, but your own guys, you want to slap the wall, dude. <laughs> you like that? Oh, no, dude, that. I love it. I'm trying to get the my video. I'm trying incredible. to get a sticker myself. Hey, well, I'll send you one. No, let's go. Oh. You know, oh. I'll send you a pack of them too because it's cool. Like when you're at home and you're banging some iron in your gym or you're working out, you can slap it all over your garage or slap it on the chest. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we you... slap them anywhere, like you know. But uh, you know where that all came from, guys? Was a few years ago. I just kind of felt like. We've kind of lost that love and feeling, you know, that win and feeling. And uh, I just was trying to create something. And uh, I, I hate the word I. We were trying to create something uh, that would glorify, like, competition and winning. And, you know, um, you know how it is. When you're doing something as much as we do it and investing as much as we do it in it, I mean – you got to glorify the wins because they're hard to come by in this sport, in this game, you know. And so uh, we just tried to create a little energy bust that way. And uh, we started competing inside of practice. We were giving out stars like a kindergarten class and <laughs> cool things. This and that. Seriously, we were. We were just trying to really just like. Find something that sticks. Com- yeah, compete and, you know, enjoy competition. And then the competition at the end, the result, the winning part of um, what we're trying to do. So it's kind of. 
obviously stuck and uh, it's a pretty cool thing i tell you what there's there's the the winning part is really cool but to see the kids celebrate uh the team themselves each other um the smiles the engagement the connectivity that's present in those types of moments um they're, they're fun to watch and, and you know part of any team's success has a lot to do with that you know just how much the kids love each other being around each other and then just you know being happy for everybody's individual and collective success it's fun to watch yeah so uh how does the uh what's the decision process going into uh, deciding who gets to slap the wall and if we have a scenario for you after you answer that question i uh, i think i might put you on the skates here for a second <laughs> okay well uh be nice, but uh, what we do is you know, we, uh, you know, we just kind of a lot of it. Obvious is pretty statistical, you know. Four for four with four homers. That's probably going to get you into consideration for slapping the wall, or if it's an old top, you know, eight innings, no walks, twelve punchouts, just the obvious. Um, but there's some other things too, right? There could be a a crucial bunker guy in, in our dugout that. You know, maybe he steals some signs or picks some pitches or um, even like Robbie Price the other day uh, allowed us to win the third game of the or the fourth game of the series against Houston to win the series. And the bullpen was starting to get a little bit thin, but he came in there and gave us a one, two, three, eight to tie it to Keegan. So he only had to throw three outs, which is basically what he had in his chamber. You know, just so things like that are just things that we think uh, – help swing or sway the game. Um, yeah, and then um, that's what gets you on the board. So what if you have a combined no-hitter? Do we cut the sticker in half? Do we parcel it out to every pitcher, or do you just pick one guy? <laughs> yeah, well, what they do usually is is uh, because of, I think, our connectivity and how the guys feel about each other and how they got their eyes open and they're aware. Um, it's like, you know, somebody's probably going to, if we gave it to one guy, he's probably going to pull the two others in and they're probably going to slap Daniel in the mouth with it, you know, uh, <laughs> all together at the same time. So it's pretty cool. We, we've had that before. We'd had it just recently against Memphis, you know. Uh, Simon had like four hits and had a heck of a day, but Groffy kind of got himself back in there, reinserted uh, on base four times, stole a couple bags, drove in some runs, so we gave him the sticker and he pulled Simon in with him and you know, so it can get two hands slapped too. You know, it'd be fine. Oh, wow. oh yeah, it's so as long as it gets on the wall, right? I guess that's all that matters. Which... Jan Gailey said it best: just score one more run than the other team, or however we got to do it. Yeah. Let's get it up there. Uh, what's your favorite look? What's your favorite uniform? Because I think all of, all of your patterns are are just probably the best in the sport. Do you care about? Well, that? thank you. That's oh, I do care. Okay. You know, yeah. obviously, you want to look good. Sure. Uh, so, you know, I can't go against our white on white, man. Uh, that home Friday white is pretty, pretty cool. You know, I give Coach Jones a lot of credit because when you have uh, a lot of compliments like you guys are giving us on our uniforms, uh, one, somebody has to come up with it. And two, um, someone has to stick with it. And that's tradition and, you know, all those types of things. So Coach Jones loved the St. Louis Cardinals. And so that's kind of how... I think the uniform uh, derived itself, and it is like there might be a lot of things that I would change since I've been here. That certainly isn't one of them. Um, great look, great tradition, great honor and respect for Coach Jones is really what it boils down to in my mind. But uh, those home whites, man, kind of my go-to. I like short pants, guys. So, really? like, the creams I'm on are blue on blues I'm on. Mm -hmm. But you haven't seen us wearing the the, the shorties much lately because we're on this kind of little bit of winning binge, which yeah. is cool. And our guys are like, you realize we haven't been wearing short pants or when we did, we didn't win. And so the guys got those locked up for now. But, uh, you know, I, I'm going white on white. I love it. Tulane is a game and a half clear of ECU. They will face the Pirates this weekend and maybe the biggest college baseball series of this three-game set coming up. Tulane is the hottest team in the country. Winners of 13 of their last 14. Their head coach, Travis Jewett, is here with us with great answers, great insight. We appreciate the access, Coach. Roll mother bleep and wave this weekend, Coach. We are behind your back. 
Go get them, and we'll talk again soon, man. If you're sending gear, we'll definitely take the stickers, but one of those hats would look yeah, beautiful right. on set. Well, count that as a done deal. Thank you. You guys, uh, you, you know, I, I do appreciate your time. It's a great honor to talk to you. Any time that I could talk about our coaches uh, and our kids and, you know, this great academic institution, man, it gives me chills, and I appreciate all the kind words and uh, look forward to uh, staying in touch with you guys down the stretch here. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. sir, Coach. We'll call when you slap the ball in Omaha. Yes, indeed. Go Let's kick, go. Go kick their ass, man. We'll talk again next week. Thank you. Okay. See One pitch at a time. See you guys. Thank yes, you. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, by the way, LSU's job will be open in about three months. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Give I mean, me this guy sign here. Sign that guy up. Jesus. How? I mean, he's, 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 you can't hate that guy. No. Huh? I mean, that guy is Slap the wall in Tiger Land. Slap the bro. wall in Tiger Land? Yeah. Wow. Uh, daily brought to you here by RMB Builders. Rhett Bourgeois and the crew. Rhett was here yesterday. RMB-Builders.com. Upgrades to the undisclosed location on their way. Compliments of RMB Builders, rmb-builders.com, Rhett Bourgeois and the crew. Commercially licensed, can rebuild your house, can uh, obviously get you into a custom-made home uh, as well. Shay Dixon is here. He is on top of the transfer portal. He is on top of uh, recruiting. We will talk all about that coming up next here on the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com, to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. Jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Abair over at Abair's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Abair's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Relief Health, the only way to get your health care in 2021. In your home or on site, Relief is changing how health care is delivered to you. No more doctor's offices, no more waiting rooms. Download the app today, Relief Health, from the Apple or Google app stores. You can get connected to a local doctor in your community or just order a test directly without talking to a doctor. Their COVID tests are live, and right now they have the Moderna vaccine. Online at ReliefHealth.com or download the app from your Apple or Google app stores now. Relief Health, changing the way that health care is brought to you in 2021. Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. Jordy Collada Show, Tuesday edition, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Shay Dixon, swagged out. CBS, pull oh, I over. I should have saved the unzip for her. You should have done like a jersey have. reveal. Yeah, you dude. should have, bro. Uh, but then he, he opens up to the Tyron Matthew Super Bowl edition Emily t-shirt. got me this. Yep. Don't worry about the L. Yeah, bro. I mean, what are you Like old? I said, I can't play every As a position. first ballot, man. Um, you know, I love that uh, that moment when uh, him and Brady were getting after it. Yes. The Badger versus the Lion. Yes. You know, just checking to see where he was at. Absolutely. And the Lion coming in in the postgame apologizing. Things got a little heated. I mean, Things like got a Brady heated. coming back and apologizing, you know, the whole time. Man, that was fantastic. Um, you're on top of this stuff on Major Burns. And, and first off, give us a little uh, background on Burns. I was... Telling me he's a Baton Rouge native, Madison Prep kid, but he, he was coming up and he was committed to LSU for a for a minute, well, about a, almost a year. Huh? Yeah, you do good on background. He uh, yeah. Well, I'll read your work. <laughs> Madison Prep kid, um, 
And he would been committed. To, if you take it back, I guess his junior year, he'd been committed to A and M. LSU offered him. He decommitted. Then that summer, ahead of his senior year, he committed to LSU. Stayed committed all the way until December, and then right before signing day, um, they kind of had a, a parting of ways. You know, in LSU's end, LSU was trying to make room for some guys. Uh, he, within a week, went to Georgia and rolled early, so that was a good landing spot for him. Uh, but if you'll remember, that was when LSU missed on, well, Raheem Jarrett and Jermaine Burton, two receivers flipped mm. on him on signing day. Mm. They missed on a couple of other big targets, and suddenly they had a bunch of spots. Yeah. They signed Dwight McLaughlin uh, after, and then signed Darren Evans right before the season started out in Nichols. Um, but Burns ended up going to Georgia, and now, it, not even a year later, what, a season later, uh, he's going to enter the transfer portal, so is what he said. A mutual breakup? With him in Georgia? No, us and, with us in LSU. No, uh, I think he probably wanted to be here on the first time around, and they kind of just ran tight on spots and tried to use those, you know, those numbers on a different position or different guys. And uh, ultimately, I think a lot of people are hoping that, um, you know, a year later that not right and wrong, but the, the two sides can kind of get back together, and that's where Burns wanted to be in the first place. It kind of all makes sense, right, with the Would. scholarly ab- available and the, the need at defensive back? One scholarship available, and we're counting towards the 2021 class, so the kids who, Mason Smith and all them, you know, the guys who are all early enrollees now and the kids who get here this summer, um, they signed a few safeties, Sage Ryan, Derek Davis, Matthew Langlois, um, but it's still a pretty big need position. So landing a guy like Burns, who he reminds me a bunch of Jay Ward, like he could play corner. He's, you know, 180 pounds, but if he gets into that 190 range, uh, he'll be good. Six two kid, but plays a lot more physical than his size and, and probably could be a pretty good um, free safety for you. So uh, I, he could play corner, could play nickel, but uh, I think he's the type where you bring him in and you try to play him at safety. But one spot, we know that they've said they've wanted safeties. You've got a Baton Rouge kid now coming away from an SEC program. Um, it would make perfect sense. We'll see what Major wants to do, but um, kind of going into it, when everybody heard that he was going into the transfer portal, um, I made a few texts, and it seemed like that's where things were trending, that he would enter his name if he knew that LSU would have a spot for him. Wow. That would be a uh, that would be a, a, a nice pickup for LSU after the process, it, and, and would fill out the twenty five, right? It would fill out the twenty five, and he was a top one hundred and fifty player coming out of high school, you know, top ten or fifteen safety. I can't remember exactly where he was ranked, but really good player. He played some last year, played a little star for Georgia, uh, and they've got some guys coming back, but also had some DBs drafted. So just to get on the field as a freshman, he had some good film. Uh, I think that LSU would LSU is no doubt right now waiting for him to enter the portal so that they can then officially talk to him and try to see if they can't get it done. Um, what do you make of recruiting right now? Is, is, is things going to open up? Or are, are these, these, these guys in this cycle going to be able to experience some, some on-campus yeah. stuff and some possible camps this offseason? Finally, um, really? June 1. And now LSU, all the SEC schools are releasing their camp dates. So all of June will be big camps. Uh, but you'll have official visits in the summertime, uh, into the fall. So it's going to be a wild, wild west stretch. Look, LSU has 12 or 13, maybe maybe 13, I think around 12 commits uh-huh. uh, right now. But what that leaves you about half the spots in the class. I think we could see some shakeup with it within those 12 um, based upon how guys do in camp, how guys do in senior year. Because for the first time in a long time, God, a year and a couple of months, they're actually going to be able to go see kids in person, work them out in person. And they've gone off of Zooms and watching highlight, or not highlight tapes, but game film the past whole cycle and into this one. Now you can actually get a feel for, um, especially in summer camps, working guys out in person, you know, putting them through uh, the ringer, match them up against other guys in one-on-one settings that you like and see how they respond. Um, Summers are always such a big eval point for Coach O, but for every school. So, uh, I think we'll see a lot of recruiting classes by December and by design uh, yeah. will probably look different than they do right now. Do you expect the bulk of this class to be in by early signing period? Yeah, I think that's always now yeah. the new goal, yeah. you know, that sign everybody early. And it just took, I think, a little bit of an adjustment period for kids to realize that they weren't losing out on some major thing if they didn't sign in December to February because they've now allowed official visits in the spring and into the summer. Um, so it's not like it used to be where – oh, I can't, you can only do it in the fall. Well, I play football every week in the fall. I'm not going to go take an official visit. And then everyone did it in January. Now everyone can just official visit pretty much whenever you want. Uh, So there's no real reason to have to wait until January. How many five stars do you think that 2022 class can get? We're at three right now. Yeah, I think it'll stay there. This is, 
This class is more top-heavy than we've seen in a while in Louisiana. Uh, now, they could add other five-stars. LSU certainly could to the commit list. Shamar Stewart, a defensive lineman, is a big name people have watched. Uh, Harold Perkins, a linebacker out of Houston, which is important to, to go back and get into Houston this year and next year. Houston's really deep, and a and doing a good job there. So uh, you want to continue to maintain, not a pipeline, but a grip on a, a guy or two a year in Houston. But I would say in Louisiana, it'll stick on three. Matthews, Walker Howard, and Will Campbell. And I'm actually interested in, I think right now maybe, it goes Walker, Campbell, and then Jacoby Matthews in the rankings, and they're all five-star guys in the composite. Uh, I think that could shuffle into any order. I think yeah. all three of those guys make a real case for being the best player in the state. One ABC. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> hey, good to, and when you bring up that commit list, all three of them say LSU next to it. So yeah, that's, they do. Uh, and it seems like they're pretty locked. Yeah. I mean, and, it seems like those three guys in particular are locked into their commitments. Well, we joke with Lloyd all the time. Does Will Campbell sound like a kind of man who's going to go back on his word? I, mean, <laughs> I don't think so. I'm not going to be the one to tell him either. No, no. Uh, yeah, I think all three of those guys. And people were surprised that Matthews committed because he had been trending out of state and had even thought about Arizona State after a visit there. Um, but I think that playing at home, now being committed and seeing that his parents – are for it. They want to be able to see him play. He's only 30 minutes down the road. And he can play safety or linebacker. Both those are going to be big needs for LSU in the next year or two. Uh, I think he's a guy that knows he can play early, so he'll stick. Um, around the state, who's next? Who's who's on the radar? I mean, I know there's so many more big names out there in this state. I mean, this seems like this is a, a overflowing year of talent. I know we've talked about that, but now where does the, the, the focus shift if you're LSU, after picking up three of the top players, now that you've got you know pretty much the majority of the top guys secured, where are they where are they looking next? Yeah, I um I'll tell you one guy we don't talk about a ton that I love out of Captain Shreve uh, is Kendrick Law. He can play both sides of the ball. Probably one of the more athletic kids in the state this cycle, just kind of pound for pound. Um, I think he would probably play wide receiver, but you could put him at running back and do some things with him. Um, dynamic, dynamic speed. Uh, return game guy. He's a top five player. Uh, you're a big Shaz Preston fan. They've got a few receivers committed. They would take him in a heartbeat. I don't think he's in a rush to do anything. And then you look down and say they've got two running backs who are ranked as top 10, 15 running backs in the country, uh, and Le'Veon Moss over to Struma, uh, and then Trevante Citizen at Lake Charles Prep. Both those guys are still uncommitted. Both have offers from LSU. Um, there's kind of this waiting game being played where when June 1st hits and these kids can go everywhere they want, what happens? You know, the out-of-state yeah. teams surge for them. So I think it was really important for LSU to get those top three done before everybody else could get, you know, a hand on them, get them on campus, all those things. Um, now it's the battle for guys like Law, the two running backs, uh, Shaz Preston, try to find, you know, I think Summer will bring some new offers in Louisiana. They've got probably, I could count five guys, and there'll be more that – if they didn't have summer camp coming up, they probably would have offered them. But now that they know they've got camp coming up, you sort of wait around, wait around, get them in person, do your evals. So um, we'll see some new offers go out. I'm excited for the summer. It'll be the first time in two years that we've had a summer camp and, and seen them be able to kind of go after some of those guys who, think about it, DJ Chark, a lot of kids over yeah. the years have earned their offer right. at summer camp and, yeah. and kind of burst onto the scene. So that'll be a fun stretch in June. Circle those dates. It seems recruiting's been fantastic, but I do have to be that guy in the room. How do you keep up the pace with Alabama? It was probably one of the greatest recruiting classes last year. A lot of people are down on Saban during COVID. Oh, he doesn't know how to recruit via Zoom all this. And then what happens? The greatest recruiting class ever. Even same with Ryan Day's lighting up the world. And I mean, yeah, we're at three, especially in the 2021 class. But it just seems we're so far away from what Ryan Day and Nick Saban did. Right. I think they're not far from that. I mean, and if you finish with a top five class consistently, I think you're in a great spot. Yeah. And you do your evals, you get the guys that you think are going to make a, a difference for you. Uh, and for LSU, a lot of that, too, is finding guys that will stay. You know, it's not this play me now or I'm leaving mentality. And I think that's where Louisiana becomes important in recruiting uh, in Texas and the Houston area and, and certainly into Mississippi and, and Georgia they've done really well with. So, I think everyone's always chasing Bama, and I think that's a fine standard to be going after. it For LSU, obviously, you have to play them every year because they're in the West, but I don't think their overall team talent, when everything fleshes out, is like so much greater than LSU. Like They had a bunch of draft picks this year in the first round. LSU did that a year ago. So I kind of like where they're at there. I'm, 
I think that the verdict, and you're right about Ryan Day, Ohio State recruits at a great level, but they're sort of out of sight, out of mind. They recruit, <laughs> they're not coming down here and taking all your best players. They're go- recruiting the Midwest and, and guys up there who. Stole um, one from them, though. Right. Yeah, no doubt. Stole one from last year. Um, and a guy like Corey Kiner um, and obviously Joe Burrow. Well, t- you'll take all you can get. Um, but I think that Ohio State sort of out of, out of sight, out of mind. I'm not all that impressed with Kirby Smart's recruiting efforts. And they are they have the number one class yeah. right now. They finished in the top three last year, and they consistently finish there. So where are the results? And we've seen them play this quarterback carousel. But then you just look at a year ago, what, Eric Gilbert, Max Johnson, uh, Jay Ward. Um, I could keep going down the list. I'm sure I'm missing guys. These were guys in their state. And Jay Ward, Max Johnson, those guys, they weren't even going after them hard. And, and those are starters here now. Uh, obviously, Gilbert was a... Uh, being recruited by everyone, but Georgia's a really talent-rich state. I'm not. I'm a bit confused why Kirby doesn't put more uh, of that fence mentality around Georgia because they're going to the West Coast to get guys. They're going up to New Jersey to get guys, and ultimately, I think all those guys are in Georgia for you. I mean, yeah. Ge- Georgia Tech signed more players out of Georgia than wow. Georgia did last wow. year. So, uh, including I'm talking top 20 players. I think Georgia had four, and Tech had eight, or something like that. So. Uh, I think for Georgia, they've got to figure out a way to really buckle in because, uh, oh, I know who else I missed, B.J. Ojolari. His brother's on Georgia's yeah, roster, right. and he came here. Uh, and it was this thing of, well, they have a – when I would ask at the time, why isn't Georgia all over this kid? Well, they kind of are, but, you know, they kind of got a deep linebacker room and or a D-end room, and, and he wants to play a little – that's <laughs> that's a recruiting pitch. You get oh, over man. that. Your brother's about to be a first-round pick or exactly. second-round pick out of, uh, out of this school, and you're gone. So, uh, And those kids were out of Marietta. I mean, these are some powerhouse programs that Georgia should be putting their foot down on. Uh, I know it's tough. You know, it's like the ball Gilbert twice yeah, when he was homesick, m- multiple times. So I, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm a bit confused, uh, and I'm curious to see where Kirby's efforts go over time because yeah. they they do pop the big guys, and they'll have a top three class. They'll be really good, but we haven't seen them win the big ones yet. And I mean, it's certainly, all of their big games really that they've been in, they've kind of come up snake eyes on and and recruiting's just been curious to me i I don't when i watch georgia play i don't see five stars i don't either you're right you're right and lsu dips in again and grabs probably their best talent and jake and jake johnson for for next year that's right the number one tight end in the country for next year jake johnson uh on his way and yeah so i'm confused by georgia and look they during that stretch people were had georgia ranked higher they had higher ranked recruiting classes lsu kicked their teeth in twice yeah Mm -hmm. they did um you hear anything on gilbert Nothing crazy new. A lot of people were asking, though, so I, I will clarify that Gilbert never enrolled anywhere else, so he's still an initial count- counter for LSU in the class he signed, which is 2020. Um, Did he so, lose his eligibility status? Uh, no. I mean, so, I, I think he's eligible to play at LSU if he gets everything in order with academics right. and back in school. But a lot of people were asking, well, if LSU takes major burns and that's the final spot, is that Gilbert out? And because he actually never went anywhere so else. He's, I, he's still secure. He was, he's still secure. He's got his spot counted in 2020 uh, until he were to sign with some other school, which he oh. had never done. Um, what would you make of the draft? About what I thought. I mean, I, Marshall was medical. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we even on the Panthers phone call with him, um, you know, they were saying, I think Rule was saying, look, we're not worried about the injuries. And they've had a long road. Like, come kill it. So clearly he had slid down a bit with, uh, medical stuff going back to high school. Man, I love the chase pick. I just don't know if they're going to wish they took Sewell at some know, point. or uh, And that's a debate for down the line. I don't know. but That scar is fucking creepy, man. I mean, it is. Yeah. With, the, with the advances is, in modern medicine, they're usually not that big. I know. I'll say this. Like in look, 2021, <clears throat> to, see a, <clears throat> to see a knee scar like that, that is, that, that's eerie. I mean, how bad was it, bro? Well, they split his knee completely open. And they're saying he's still going to be on track to come back. I just think that, and look, I can't wait. I hope it works out. Me too. Because yeah, I love I mean, Jamar. No, no, no doubt. Uh, and no it's doubt. great for them. But when Joe was getting carted off the field last year, it's how many people would have looked up and said, let's take a receiver time? <laughs> yeah. You know, so. You know what we really need right. is a receiver now. That's right. That's <laughs> more right. guys open down the field that he doesn't have time to throw to. But I don't know. They did, they did address some O-line across the draft. Yeah. I was just curious if they were going to go Sewell and – you saw the Lions, I think, were 7-8 and eight whenever Dan Campbell had Sewell come up. They were all over that. Um, real quick before I get you out of here, you know what I've been paying attention to who looks like the, the, their roster is taking shape and looking legit is Woodlawn. 
Oh yeah, huh? I mean, and the, you know the uh, Jordan Matthews kid and the Ricky Collins kid, right? I and mean, both are SEC players. People, right? I've gotten a lot of calls about Ricky Collins asking, when is he going to shatter that sort of Power Five glass ceiling, which I think will happen over the summer. He's been really good in camp stuff. Then we've got a stream of playing football yes. again. Then Lehigh, I guess Liberty, yes. will have a football team next fall, and they've already got a running back that's been offered by LSU that run, owns half the state's track. Uh, Top times, I guess, in short distance, so like sixty and one hundred. But how's that kid? We've got VR higher Catholic guy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and Le'Veon Moss is still at a Struma. I mean, he ain't not at Walker or anywhere else man, yet. Bro. So yeah, uh, would you have believed it? Woodlawn, a Struma, Lehigh, I love it. Liberty. I love We're on the that. come up out here, Jordy. I love that man. Um, good to see you, Shady. Yeah, absolutely. Good to see y'all. Swagging. Shoes. I should have done the reveal. On you the, should have done the reveal. That's okay. But the jacket's tight. The shirt Obvious. is an ace. The, the shoes is a low-key five-star. Um, enjoy the scene, bro. We'll talk again soon. Yeah, I'll be back next week. Uh, Katie, Jack, Lizzie, Shay, Jordy Collada, we're signing off. Go Chevrolet drives us every single day. We'll be back with you tomorrow. Get your food questions in for Chef Jean-Paul Bourgeois. He'll be here at 830 tomorrow morning answering your food questions. And maybe, 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 maybe a little Cinco de Mayo coming down the pipeline for tomorrow. Well, Chef, so, tomorrow might be yeah. the day to be on the, J- on the Jordy Collada show. We might yeah, have, uh, yes. Readers, readers before 8. eight. Yeah, yeah margaritas well, before we'll eight. Call, exactly. Uh, Jordy only likes one alcoholic beverage, and it's tequila shots all throughout the day. Don't go tell them all the secrets. <laughs> uh, thanks to Travis Jewett. Thanks to the man, Sh- uh, Shay D. We also talked this morning to Hunt Palmer and Jim Nagy. Good stuff. Check out the podcast brought to you by RMB Builders. Have a good Tuesday. We're back with you tomorrow morning.